Ah, another beautiful day, another beautiful day here. I'm a little uh, a little tired this morning because I was up last night at uh, 3 a.m. I came out here and I looked up. It is beautiful blue sky right now, but last night there were millions of stars out. There's no light contamination out here. I'm not close to a city or anything. I'm in the forest. And I looked up and I saw just an incredible night sky. It was a crisp, clear uh, night. And there were just, it was just incredible. Like, a, like I've never seen before. It was, a, was amazing. Which brings me to the topic of this video. With all those millions and millions and millions and millions and gazillions of stars out there, and the millions and gazillions and trillions and cabillions and quala, what, what are the words for the hashtag millions of interstellar bodies, isn't it pretty likely that there's other intelligent life out in the universe somewhere? And if so, how come they haven't found us? Or how come we haven't found them? That's kind of the question that, uh, that, that that's, you know, people ponder that. And uh, there's been movies made about that and books written about it. And I, I've been a little bit shocked that even some of the uh, great minds, uh, the astrophysicists and the, and the big thinkers, I've, uh, I've looked up some of their thoughts on the matter. And I, I got to say, I'm pretty disappointed with their explanations and um, and their assertions, you know, because it, to, to me it's pretty obvious uh, that we have almost no hope in hell of ever contacting or being contacted by other uh, life forms in, in, the, in the universe. To me it's pretty obvious. I'm going to try and explain it to you. And uh, when I say life forms, I don't mean, uh, you know, uh, one of these. Of course, this is Sorry, I just destroyed an Earth life form. You know, this is a plant. Uh, if there's another planet somewhere in the universe where there are plants, uh, they're never going to contact us. <laughs> so I guess we're talking about intelligent life forms. Life forms that can uh, evolve to the point where they uh, ponder what's up there. What is beyond my little dirt pile that I'm growing out of and I, let me let me uh, let me talk for a bit here okay uh, humans uh, have been around on earth uh, for a couple of hundred thousand years say okay uh, just rounding and uh, for about a hundred and ninety eight thousand of those two hundred thousand years we we were pretty stupid <laughs> but morons actually and it's only been recently that we've kind of started becoming um, aware and been able to look up and contemplate not not just look up and cower when there's an eclipse but uh, it's only been recently that we've uh, truly begun to understand in even a minuscule way um, where we are in in the universe right um, it's only been in the last let's say hundred years that we have even had the tools to be able to uh, listen or send messages out into space Earth has been uh, uh, spewing out into space now for, let's just say, a hundred years to keep uh, you know, uh, first order approximations of um, uh, spewing noise out into space in the form of uh, you know, radio waves and uh, TV and radio and all, all, the, all the stuff that we're spewing out there. Noise. Let's call it uh, noise. You know, we're a very noisy planet. Uh, at that frequency, we're probably noisier than uh, the sun. We're pretty bright in uh, human created uh, frequencies that we you know cell phones and all the stuff that's buzzing around everywhere is spewing out there so how come someone hasn't heard us well uh the answer is in the uh what i first said uh, you know and in the last hundred years we've been pretty noisy and uh, the noise we've been sending out uh, travels at the speed of light which is the fastest anything can travel uh and it's been spewing out there for a hundred years so our noise has radiated out from earth for a hundred years at the speed of light so it's radiated out there uh, say a sphere of a hundred light years that's that's 
the sphere of our noise. Now, I'm approximating again because that would say in a sphere of noise, 100 light years in, uh, in radius, uh, that would assume the Earth is still. And the Earth is not stationary. The Earth is uh, going around the sun and the sun is traveling. So, so really, it's not a sphere because we're actually moving. But uh, relative to the speed of, uh, of the radio waves and, and the speed of light noise that we're sending out, the Earth is uh, first order approximation, we're stationary. So let's just uh, assume that we're talking about a sphere of noise that extends out from Earth 100 light years. Well, that's not very far because the universe is big. So if there was uh, an, an intelligent alien life form, um, that lived a thousand light years away from us on, a, on another planet, they wouldn't have heard it yet. W our noise hasn't even got a tenth of the way there. Yes, the universe is big. So it takes a long time for our signals to reach a potential listener a and vice versa. Now we've been listening for, let let's just say a hundred years. So we, we are listening for some sort of noise coming from out there. Now, so the universe is big. That's one problem. Now think about this. Time. That's the other big factor. Uh, I, I read somewhere that uh, on average, uh, a, a mammal species on Earth, this is uh, what we know, a mammal species on Earth uh, exists for approximately two million years. That's the average lifespan of a, of a mammal on Earth. Two million years. Uh, the dinosaurs uh, lasted a lot longer than that. The dinosaurs lasted for something like 150 million years before, you know, from where, when they evolved to when they became extinct. The dinosaurs were on Earth for a long time. Humans have only been on Earth for about, like I said, 200,000 years. And it's only been the last, say, 100 years that we've even been able to listen with tele um, dishes and been able to see uh, with telescopes. Um, but uh, uh, dinosaurs were around for 100, 150 million years. Let's use the dinosaurs as an example, okay? Because they're this, uh, t the animal that's lasted for a long time on Earth. Well, I guess insects have lasted for longer, but maybe one particular, I, I don't know. How long have ants been uh, uh, on Earth? Have they evolved? Have they changed? I don't know. Let's just use the dinosaurs, okay? The dinosaurs existed for a period of 150 million years. So let's just assume now that the dinosaurs uh, were emitting noise out into the cosmos. They, let's say they had cell phones. The dinosaurs had cell phones and the dinosaurs had radios. <laughs> you know, they listened, to, they listened to jazz music, the brontosaurus, the brontosaurus bronx. <laughs> Dinosaurs listened to jazz music and they spewed out radio waves through uh, 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 into the universe, okay? And they, uh, when they started, they created a, no a noise front that emanates from the Earth in a spherical, assuming that the Earth is stationary, first order approximation, uh, a noise front that uh, uh, radiates out from the Earth. And it radiated out for 150 million years and then the dinosaurs became extinct, and then it stopped. Then the noise stopped. The noise they sent out kept going. Okay? And it kept going, and it kept going, and it kept going. Fast forward at uh, 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 500 million years. There is a noise shell, let's say, like, uh, like, the, sh like the shell of an onion. Uh, 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 an onion has different... You, know, you can peel an onion and it has different uh, concentric shells. So the noise front emanated by dinosaurs for the period of 150 million years. I imagine now a shell, first order approximation spherical, the leading edge forms a sphere and then it, the, the shell thickness is 150 million light years. And then the inside of the shell and then the noise is gone. And that keeps going. And as it grows and grows and grows, it gets you know, the, the energy is dispersed over a much greater area and gets fainter and fainter and fainter. So an alien life form, if it were listening, would have to exist in a position in space 
where that shell of noise that is 150 million light years thick travels through their position in space. So that alien life form would have to exist in that 150 million year time in that position or they wouldn't hear it. Do you understand what I'm saying? So let's say that that shell of noise is emanating from, from the Earth. If an alien life form evolves after that noise has already passed by, they won't hear it if they're inside the, uh, the shell. Or if they're much farther away, that that noise, uh, uh, the outer, the, the leading edge of that noise shell hasn't got there yet, if uh, the alien life form is a, a billion light years away, I'm just making numbers up here. I don't know if those those distances exist, but if they're much farther away and an alien life form uh, evolves, the alien life form exists for 50 million years and then goes extinct. If during their existence in their position, that noise front, that noise shell doesn't pass through them, they won't hear it. And when you start thinking about the vastness of space, because remember, we're a planet orbit, orbiting the sun in a solar system. That's, that's nothing. That's, that's like a, a pinpoint. Then we're in a galaxy, which is already huge, but is a pinpoint, in a, a, a sea of galaxies over a vast, huge inter, intergalactic distances are huge okay um, if there's an alien life form in, on another in another galaxy uh, the concept of our noise intersecting their position during a time when they actually exist is minuscule because even in the case of the dinosaurs that uh, uh, existed for 150 million years, 150 million years is, is, is if, you, if you had a, a timeline of from when the solar system uh, was, was formed till now, it's, it's a sliver, a pencil with sliver on, on a line that's, you know, 100 feet long. You know, the, you've seen that kind of analogy before. It's so such a minuscule uh, amount of time in, in the total timeline. That noise front, that thickness of the shell of the, the noise from when the, the, when, we, when the dinosaurs started emitting noise to when they went extinct, that 150 million years uh, of width of noise is so tiny that uh, alien life form could exist at any time in the in the billions of years that the uh, universe has existed that well, what are the chances that uh, they they existed at the at the right place and the right time that they intersected that uh, that they were able to listen do you see the dilemma there's m a much greater chance that we just two ships cross in the night. To give you an analogy, it's like uh, the guy, the lonely man that lives in New York and could never find his true love. Yet his true love lives two blocks away. And that's because the guy gets up in the morning and he goes to 5th Street and 28th Avenue uh, to the coffee shop where he likes to have his coffee and bagel at 7.30 in the morning before he gets on the subway and goes to work uh, four blocks south. And he always encounters the same people that are uh, in the same routine. And, un and he's lonely. He's never met his true love. But he, he doesn't realize uh, that there's a woman that lives two blocks away who goes to the same uh, coffee shop on 5th Street and 28th Avenue to have the same coffee he likes and the same uh, uh, bagel that he likes. They, they would be soulmates. But she doesn't go there at 7.30 in the morning. She goes there at lunch. And she works four blocks north of him and she doesn't take the subway she walks and their whole life they cross 
and their world night their world lines never meet they never occupy the same space at the same time they don't intersect and it's a sad story they're both lonely and they have miserable lives and they die alone <laughs> in, in a in a city right in a, in a microcosm of the universe two humans that they don't intersect there are two ships that pass in the night and and, and that's what um, uh, if there is intelligent life in the universe the distances are so vast and the time is so huge what's the word so is so long is so there's so much time and so much distance involved that the odds of um, of crossing and intersecting uh, the listening and the noise um, is insignificant think about it I don't know if I explained it right, guys. I, I'm trying uh, trying to explain it. Uh, I, I probably should have sat down uh, before I did this video and actually got some numbers, you know, so that I, I could impress you with numbers. Uh, you know, the universe is 14.8 uh, billion years old. Uh, and as a species, we've only been able to uh, listen and send out noise for 73 years out of those 14.8 billion. So our uh, our shell of noise that's traveling uh, through the universe is um, is uh, uh, 73 years thick. No one's heard us yet, and and our it's only 73 uh, light years from the Earth. I changed. I went from 100 to 73 for some reason. If humans exist for another say uh, uh, 100,000 years, I mean, some people think we're gonna we're gonna annihilate each other with nuclear weapons in the next 20 years. But let's say we last another uh, 100,000 years before uh, uh, a meteorite hits the Earth and boom, you know, the noise the noise is uh, shut down. Uh, then then we've we've emitted a band of noise 100,000 light years thick that's gonna travel through the cosmos. Uh, in a in a universe that's 14.8 billion years old and what are the chances that's going to intersect someone who's listening uh, uh, 7,000 uh, light years away uh, a, an intelligent life form that is going to exist for 500,000 years so they listen for 500,000 years what's the chance that our 100,000 years band of noise reaches them 2,000 light years away or it's just it's, someone do the math Neil deGrasse Tyson do the math right you're the astrophysicist you should understand this stuff do the math and I think you'll find that uh, the, the chance of the listeners and the, the the ones making the noise and the ones listening have a insignificant chance of intersecting so don't worry about it. Aliens are not coming. We're not going to find aliens, and they're not going to find us. We're on our own, right? It's it's just you and me, kid. We're on our own. The aliens, we're like two ships that pass in the night. And that chipmunk does not agree with me. That's why I love it up here, guys. Nature, trees, the earth, the stars, a chance to just, uh, you know, contemplate. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe. Help the channel grow. And uh, you guys have a fantastic, safe rest of your day or week or weekend or whatever it is you're doing. And I will catch you on the next one.